So um, uh, I'm here going to uh, talk a little bit about the machine learning. And uh, I actually, my content have a lot of Microsoft machine learning. Um, I don't know if uh, it's uh, uh, to your interest. I was, uh, um, I was expecting a little bit more fireset chat sort of thing. But I'm uh, perfectly happy to uh, uh, entertain any questions whenever, uh, whenever you um, you have, right? So I will get started. Let me no my slides. Oh, it did. Um, so Lindsay, we can enable participants to really ask you questions if that's what you prefer. You want to make it more interactive. They can raise their hand, and we can enable them to talk if you'd like that. Yeah, can we do that? That'd be yeah. that'd be awesome. We can do that. Kathy, what do you think? She's not here. Okay, okay, please carry on. I'm sorry. I, yeah, it's fine with me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, can I see raise hand? I don't think I see it. Oh, I could. Okay, okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, I want to uh, so um, a quick uh, background on myself. Um, so I'm right now our uh, director of data science in Azure Data. We're part of uh, this newly formed digital uh, transformation unit and uh, product unit. And um, uh, so the formerly data SQL and AI platform and uh, IoT, uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, Power Platform, Power App, Power BI, it's all part of uh, this digital transformation uh, platform unit. And uh, 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 specifically, my team actually called AI customer engineering, and we focus on uh, customer co innovation. So, what we do is applied um, AI research. Essentially, uh, we work with our um, um, customers, and when they actually have a business problem, and um, they they would like some solution that. Uh, doesn't exist today, and uh, no out of box AI, no out of box machine learning, and uh, we will actually working together with the customer with um, uh, with Microsoft Research, and uh, to actually um, uh, build a um, build a more innovative AI solution so that potentially could solve problem. So we are uh, we are uh, published papers as well. We also actually build early prototype um, uh, product. So a um, little bit kind of a startup um, in Microsoft. And uh, um, so um, uh, currently we're focused on AI in data. And uh, because after we did a pure AI for, uh, for a few years, um, we realized the real main challenge is uh, how to get the data to AI or AI to data, whichever way you look at it. And so we're now focusing on how to actually um, um, infuse AI in data product or actually make your data platform is a natural place for AI and machine learning. Um, i am spent 24, uh, 26 years in Microsoft now. And uh, I, um, I was uh, head of a SQL Server and the SQL database and uh, uh, all the SQL stuff for uh, for quite a while. I was in SQL for 15, uh, 15 years, and uh, then I was in uh, AI platform as uh, uh, GPM, and uh, we AI platform have uh, Azure Machine Learning and Cognitive Services. So um, in this session, I put together some content. Um, one of our ambition objectives. Uh, is in Microsoft AI is make AI real, make AI real for um, for business, and make it AI for um, for people's day to day lives. So it's not just a technology, and uh, it's actually something. Um, it's actually can uh, matter matter to business, matter to society. Uh, I think I touched on this uh, a little bit um, before we have this uh, data to AI, right? You, uh, you, you start with uh, ingesting all the data and put it somewhere and uh, doing some analysis and you realize you're, uh, um, 
uh, your uh, business analytics or uh, basic uh, statistic analytics is not actually um, uh, going to solve your problem, let's go look at AI. But uh, in real life, actually, uh, what we learned in past the three, uh, uh, over three years is uh, that's actually not how things start. Um, generally, customer uh, in IT, maybe this is a flow, but when you talk to um, a real business, generally they have a business problem. They're looking for a, a technology or structure can solve that problem. So this picture, it's, it's uh, uh, generally how you build information system uh, to solve um, real business problem. You start with a problem, try to figure out what will fit, right? So lots of the innovation uh, offices with customer we, uh, we're partnering with, doing co-innovation start, they will describe their uh, business objectives then their um, technology infrastructure without any specific um, product or specific actually imp implementation of technology in there. Um, this is actually if you, um, some of you, if you uh, remember this architect type of a training, right? You do not get into talk about a specific technology because that's implementation. So um, it's kind of uh, uh, refreshing for me to relearn uh, how to do pro uh, business problem solving. Yeah, feel free to jump in uh, if you have any uh, questions. So um, if you if you will, you can think about AI, uh, AI system is designed for answer the questions you probably don't know yet, right? Because you generally have a business problem, then you double click, try to sort out what kind of question you want to ask. Um, so this kind of AI everywhere make this uh, um, AI project pipeline become quite complicated. And there's many, many components and each component, um, if you talk to a data scientist, they all use their own favorite tools and the language in each stage and uh, make the matter even more complicated. Machine learning really is experiment. So this is ongoing loop for pretty much actually, uh, other than the requirement, uh, probably a little more stable. And uh, the iteration generally doesn't just stop at uh, uh, where I draw this feature in engineering and model training. It's actually, uh, we, from what we learn, it actually expanded entire end-to-end -end, uh, process for machine learning is actually is iterative, it's experiment. And also in, in lots of cases, right? Even after we deploy it, then the business owner realized the requirement actually changed. And um, so it will result of uh, uh, iterate, uh, iteration from beginning again. So this requires the tools and uh, the uh, um, the platform, technology platform, and uh, needed to be very adaptive and uh, need to be able to restart from beginning very fast and taking the feedback from the end user on your model, rather turned into you know, container or API or build into a application. Any questions so far? Um, I will go over this fast. I already talked about it. This is in Microsoft um, uh, 10K statement. So the the main shift, right? Um, there's uh, um, there's a lots of demand in the space. Um, now I see even um, the, the data community is interested. I'm so excited to see this. Um, so uh, in the past, uh, I don't know, five years at least or longer, um, every company is starting to transform to software company. The company I work with uh, um, in financial space, in healthcare, in manufacturing, uh, they actually all starting to uh, gather, generated, and gather lots of unique IP, right? Uh, intellectual property. Then they realize actually um, they starting build up this uh, uh, value, higher value, uh, rich platform for their um, uh, for their segment of business, and um, uh, 
lots of these business not only they transformed into more or less a software company we're not talking about just it stack right and uh, they actually realized whatever they uh, gathered and they built can help um, other business in the same segment right so they started branching out and uh, um, then uh, we basically seeing uh, uh, customer and business adding ai to their business solutions and uh, so this this current uh, belief is every company will eventually become ai company ai is not a robot ai is actually uh, to be able to assist human human expert right to do their job faster and uh, so they um, relieve them from all these mundane repetitive work ai can do this and uh, can actually enable them to do more um, business critical um, uh, work for the functions for their business. So with AI, with all this uh, um, uh, digital modeling of your business, then uh, it enables uh, the world, right? All the business world have a uh, uh, proper digital feedback loop from your end customers and uh, to build your product, to optimizing operations, uh, empowering your employees. Um, is this content too high level? I think <laughs> I didn't get much interest. Um, so uh, we went to look at uh, um, uh, lots of uh, 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 analyst report. And uh, one thing is uh, knowing uh, uh, we have this uh, um, anticipation, everything will become um, AI company. And uh, then if you look at uh, um, AI adoption, uh, there are lots of uh, uh, lots and lots of a startup in AI and uh, lots of open source AI ad um, 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 advances. And uh, then there's lots of uh, tooling platform type of uh, uh, um, for AI, right? Uh, Microsoft have Azure Machine Learning. Of course, uh, um, Google have uh, Collab. Then they release this new uh, new enterprise AI and Amazon and everybody, right? Then if you look at MLflow and, and the Kubeflow. So these are tooling level. Then they enable uh, data scientists to build custom models and sometimes uh, in lots of application like Microsoft Cognitive Service, we took lots of these and into um, a customer can just use it, we assumed, right? Then uh, across the board, uh, across the board, the AI adoption is kind of um, not that fast actually. So we went to look at uh, um, the uh, adoption cohorts, right? We find out the, uh, um, the digitally mature companies and uh, um, they will say 81% of digitally matured company think their innovation as their strengths. And, uh, but, uh, um, but uh, generally, even with the, uh, um, the front runners, the adoption still uh, lower. And um, the, if you, you see 94% of this is, uh, uh, Mackenzie did this a uh, year ago, and uh, the 94% uh, of C-suite, right? All believe they need AI. And so this is a really good uh, environment, right? To um, to actually have the technology advances, um, but the the challenge is how, right? So everybody's um, most customer I interact with, obviously, um, they actually invested um, uh, lots of resources. They created the center of excellence. They created innovation office to be able to actually put AI into their business, right? So there's lots of uh, um, Lots of a competition going on, but um, adoption is uh, not as fast. And uh, so strategy actually shows up as number one. Um, there still need lots of uh, um, learning and education um, because lots of the, uh, uh, the customers have the willingness, um, but still need to, uh, more education to actually understand what, um, what AI is and uh, then what is AI strategy is for their business. Then there's a second one is talent. Talent pool has been very challenging. So what we're here, uh, Microsoft, we believe our goal for today and uh, the near mid midterm is a bridge 
the gap right between today and the tomorrow and uh, help uh, our customers make this happen right i said make ai real that put ai into action and uh, then respond today with ai what can we do with the technology um the, the state of ai is today and uh, then lay the foundation for what's come next in the meantime we are reimagining uh, what's possible. So we're doing lots of, um, um, we code AGI, um, artificial general intelligence with uh, AI supercomputer with advanced models. And uh, we actually are learning as we're building customer uh, solutions using these advanced AI. We, of course, AI started with Microsoft Research 29 years ago. I will now to, uh, so let's start first um, the cognitive services and the cognitive services as a names right is covers cognition and uh, the vision speech language. These are we call it a pre um, pre cooked AI. These are the AI models and from uh, um, Microsoft first party learnings research and we turn them at, into REST APIs. And uh, we, uh, we build application around it so you can use these individual models. And uh, if you list like in the vision and of course we have face recognition, we have a custom vision for you to do object detection and uh, we have speech translation. And in the language, uh, we have the library, the Lewis and uh, lots of uh, um, other sentiment analysis, for example, entity uh, extraction. Then uh, search, right? Cognitive search, we just recently added, um, we call it a, a semantic search, used advanced uh, uh, language model Turing to help search to be more um, uh, understanding of context of how you want to search. And so the search result is a lot more relevant. Then there's a virtual agent or bot, right? Bot by itself is not AI. Bot is application framework. And, uh, but if you combine bot with AI, could be cognitive service, could be your own AI model and enable you to build this, the first tier of your AI, business AI infrastructure and uh, connect um, connect your backend system could be SQL, right? And closer to your human customers. And uh, so bot services and uh, bot plus AI right now is the most uh, um, ubiquitous uh, IT uh, application out there. And after you have a bot uh, infrastructure, right? In your, uh, uh, in your business world, and uh, you can connect to enterprise systems. You can continue to advance your AI model to make your bot more intelligent, more like a, um, a easier have a communication with your customer. For example, we're working with one of the um, European bank, and um, they have they already have a bot, and uh, but the bot um, have uh, uh, in many cases have a hard time um, understand the human's question. And it could come from any of these omni-channels, right? Um, so what we did is we added this ad advanced language model, um, for example, use OpenAI as GPT-3 to better understand the context of uh, um, what a customer is asking for and um, in different languages, right? These ad <coughs> advanced models, because the universal language models, they actually um, can understand the different languages. And uh, to translate that to um, more uh, business contextual uh, description for your uh, knowledge base. And uh, when knowledge base returns a answer, when you did your search, returns the answer in text, and uh, the, the bot using advanced language model will be able to convert the standard IT lingo to a more um, customer-friendly uh, description for that particular customer, either maybe they asked in um, different language like Spanish, right? And your knowledge base is in English and, uh, and the style of conversation, it's actually make the bot 
more conversation now. Anything, any questions from the audience? Feel free to raise your hands or jump in and uh, any question in chat? No. Are these topic interesting? So very quiet audience, <laughs> your top <tough> crowd. <laughs> um, so the uh, uh, one of the uh, most uh, popular bot we have are the uh, uh, CDC, um, the coronavirus self-checker uh, bot. We built this with um, our healthcare, uh, healthcare group with CDC and we created uh, um, the uh, uh, CDC uh, COVID self-checker bot. Lots of uh, our customer and incorporated uh, this bot into their business, right? Because when they have customer need to, uh, when they have their employee need to go back and, uh, or they need to interact with other, um, their own customers. And it's important to, when is uh, check their symptoms and give their get, give them guidance of what kind of resource are there available to, uh, um, uh, to actually help them, right? So this is a very popular being deployed and created thousands, thousands of times and uh, many, many customers. Then we have, uh, we call the knowledge mining and uh, this essentially allow you to create um, our simpler version because it's stored in JSON of a knowledge graph. And um, uh, cognitive search allow you to take your data in whatever format. And uh, for example, it's in photos or PDF files, right? Use AI enabled uh, OCR and uh, translate that to text. Also, we have other um, APIs allow to, you to script uh, take a different uh, format of documentation and uh, turn that into plain text like in JSON. And uh, you can also use uh, form recognizer to do this. What a great thing about cognitive services, you can plug this all in, right? After they turn into either image or text or what have you, and or even pre-processing before it turn into text, you can add uh, any AI model, it can be our cognitive service AI model and um, uh, can be your own uh, created. For example, we do a lot of these using uh, um, Turing uh, models, Google's T5, what have you. And if you go to Hugging Face, there's 80 something um, different uh, NLP models. And um, you can add your uh, different uh, uh, regression models, the class more uh, classic machine learning. And uh, then you actually literally enriching your data and create uh, understanding and the relationship of this data into, we call it a knowledge store or lots of customer call it a knowledge graph. And uh, um, this is, could be um, using pure statistic analysis, right? We did lots of this during uh, working with healthcare and uh, using a uh, co-occurrence of uh, statistic analytics. And uh, then you have, uh, you, can, you can use a SQL graph, um, for example, or, or you can just put them in, uh, in uh, JSON, right, rows and the, uh, like a key value pair. And uh, there's a plenty of uh, visualization and uh, open source uh, um, package uh, allow you to um, visualize these, uh, like especially co-occurrence graph. Uh, when you have so many data clusters, it's easier to view it. For example, if you, you're a doctor, your doctor wants to know the comorbidity of uh, diseases, right? You know, uh, every single uh, element, the different, uh, for example, different there's a uh, lot of startups specializing in this uh, area as well. So this is where you can literally combine um, uh, combine AI and uh, with all the tooling you're already familiar with, right? Um, it's a SQL, the Spark, and uh, it's just blob storage. And uh, you have your query analytics tools on top and you can enrich that, make that better with AI. So uh, that's why I like to say 
data does not equal to information, right? And uh, you have a bottle of liquid and it is data. You don't know what it is. You have to go try to figure out what it is, right? So data is not information. And this literally, after so many years of digitization, right? Lots of customer uh, have their uh, business document still in paper in a storage room somewhere. This is a picture literally from a customer. And uh, there are so many latent values in, in the content currently not stored in the structured data. And uh, imagine the amount of work we've been doing digitization. You scan this in, you do whatever, right? And store somewhere, then you go actually try to see if you can discover something too late. The world is moving so fast these days. And uh, because of all the devices advances, we are literally generating more and more and more content. So if you're just using uh, traditional processes, the earlier I showed this picture, you have data, then you get AI. Um, it's, we already know it's not working. AI need to be everywhere. And uh, so AI, so then they realize if you actually doing migration, just uh, take exactly what you have today, put in the new environment, that's actually not efficient, right? Also um, moving bits, when you have a petabytes, um, petabytes of a data, and um, it takes lots of time. And uh, so you want to prioritize, right? You want to actually have a focus on the, uh, um, what's actually gonna help your company grow for the next six months, a year or five years. And uh, then considering either archive or probably some data can be purged. So put all the AI together can help you prioritize, can help you recognize, uh, recognize the importance of your data. And uh, we have lots of these APIs. And for example, form recognizer, right? Uh, this actually turned out the most popular um, cognitive service we released. Um, one simple thing like um, expense receipts and um, the expense receipt have different format. And today, remember, I know I still doing this. So go to expense report, you have to type all these in. And uh, now the with form recognizer, we can put it into expense reporting system. You just scan it in, right? It will recognize everything, populate the form, and uh, goes forward to uh, uh, to your expense approval system, right? And uh, locked into your backend, aggregate into your uh, PNL, and all that, right? So this is saves so much time. We have uh, 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 this case study with Starbucks. Literally, it will take them about a month to process all the bank receipts, right? Because they got they go by beans everywhere and different other product. And uh, with the form recognizer, and the, they don't have to set up, configure the application to adapt to each different bank receipt anymore. And uh, the basic scans in, they were done within a day. This have actually very high accuracy level and does take human feedback. So you try a few of these uh, um, uh, forms, then you realize it's not uh, done correctly because it's AI, right? Uh, you can label it and um, correcting the, the, the model's uh, recognition and it to be more precise. And all you can write little post-processors. So that's why we call this, um, I think, ingesting paper. So this way you can connect all the data, right? And uh, not everything in, those, in the paper uh, material is meaningful and uh, to your business and sometimes have, uh, have a seasonal effect, right? It's meaningful for this month and meaningful for 10 years and you may not want to all load them at the same time right so and with ai you can create a system and it can be more targeted and more effective so this is a typical pattern just make it a simpler i will skip this uh, this demo um so we, we scanned in the, all the JFK files when they released and uh, you can do search. And uh, um, it was interesting, with, that's where I find out the SQL Server being used way back by, uh, by CIA. Sorry, my slides, um, the video, do I have time for the video? Oh, it's almost eight, sorry, I have an eight o'clock meeting. Um, 
15 minutes. Sorry if you don't mind, I skip forward. Then I'm going to move on to custom AI, right? So yes, there's a pre-cooked AI with a particular architecture, and in many cases, it doesn't quite fit, right? It's good for a startup POC, but when you actually want to, to get to a very specific uh, business solution, you need to create your own, and or it doesn't exist a pre-cooked one. And uh, it's very time consuming. Uh, for data scientists, that's why there's a whole uh, talent shortage, right? You have to pick features. A feature actually is not a raw data, right? And uh, then uh, what algorithm and uh, what parameter, you know, the uh, uh, think about if regression algorithm, these are the uh, uh, parameters, right? Uh, for you, it depends on how many um, uh, nomios, binomials, there's two, uh, two is the one is easier. And uh, uh, the polynomial depends, can be really, um, uh, really long, right? So only way to figure this out is after you build a model, you test for maybe F1 score to uh, look at the confusion matrix and see how it goes if you classification problem, right? Then uh, um, this entire process generally is, we're not talking about seconds, right? At the best, we're talking about an hour or so. And then you get a model 30%, say F1 score, we don't like it. And uh, um, so then you rinse repeat takes lots of time. So then this research um, for automated machine learning to help you select different algorithm or select ensemble of the algorithm and um, then uh, help you do uh, hyperparameter tuning and uh, then uh, generate end result a model and uh, track the whole thing in the registry and um, uh, until you, uh, you pick one you like, right? So it saves lots of time, especially data scientists loves this, right? So now um, you let uh, machine do this, right? So you create one 30%, 50%, we do all of this and you can set a target. You can set target as like the, uh, the, the performance target. You can set a number of iterations because if you deep learning model, you decided to use uh, um, a GPU, right? GPU time generally is expensive. So you can set a limited time. This is integrated with Power BI. Even Power BI uses CPU. CPU will take like a longer time to train a model. So they, by default, I think they set to 50 um, uh, iterations. And uh, uh, in, in most cases, if you take the default uh, built-in algorithm supported by Microsoft uh, uh, automatic machine learning, and uh, they, they will converge, they will give your model. Yeah. Then you can pick this model and uh, deploy it, right? And so you decided, uh, you know, um, the 70%, 95% is good enough. And um, then we're going to deploy that model. Uh, we'll deploy that model through this, um, uh, the process. And um, we can image the model into a container. You'll get a pickle file because everything is Python based, by the way, in uh, Azure Machine Learning. And uh, it will image into uh, your model, uh, the pickle file into a container. And um, you can use Azure Machine Learning to deploy the model um, into AKS into, uh, um, for, for inference. So DevOps, again, in your circle is iterative, it's connected to Azure, um, uh, the CICD pipeline, DevOps pipeline as well. And uh, we do have a data drift uh, analysis. And so you don't have to always set scheduled retraining and you can based on the drift and decide for larger model, retraining could be uh, not very economical or just time, right? Um, we have a customer have thousands of these models and every week they have a window of eight hours. And uh, so it cannot, every model get retrained just takes too long. It's not going to meet um, the redeployment time window because you need a tagging, tagging on the test, right? Text feedback and uh, meet the quality standard before you can uh, release it. So uh, one example is uh, uh, we built uh, this uh, with uh, Novartis built AI factory to connect uh, their um, scientists, uh, their uh, uh, computer department and uh, their regulators, everything together in a pipeline. Uh, there's case study, you can actually uh, find it. I'll skip the video. Um, so I'll get right to 
next part, I think it's uh, um, interesting reimagining AI at scale. This, this actually, because my team doing co-innovation, we spend a lot of time um, in this space. There is uh, uh, no official product and uh, OpenAI GPT-3 have a website so you can request access and uh, um, so you can test it out. So GPT-3 right now is the second, it was the largest model, have 175 billion parameters. And uh, the uh, um, uh, I think a Google had one that's bigger, but they don't actually have API interface to it. You can't uh, use it uh, directly. You have to do fine tuning for specific tasks. And um, with GPT-3, we do have APIs or OpenAI has uh, APIs. That's a fine tuned specific tasks. And uh, of course, to train a model that big and um, uh, the regular uh, computer cluster is uh, not going to be efficient because it, it just takes way too long, right? Um, fine tuning going to be almost impossible. So right now OpenAI actually released the fine tuning interface. You can actually fine tuning your own um, your own specific task. Um, we spent uh, like uh, quite a few years to create um, the supercomputer in Azure. And um, this actually is a lot bigger now. We show you the size, uh, 10,000 GPU. I think you can multiply that uh, by a certain number. It's a lot bigger uh, now. So in, um, because of this uh, uh, in cloud, you can actually, um, we created a new um, uh, fabric. And uh, to be able to do resource sharing across these uh, parallel um, AI training tasks. Mostly you need the, the training test. The inference actually for GPT-3, uh, you do actually need a GPU because it's a really big model. But if you distill a smaller version of that, you probably can move down to uh, less number of GPUs and uh, to actually you know, just use it to do training. And uh, 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 along the way, right? That's why we call the reimagine. We actually create a new fabric and uh, New, uh, new type of Azure resources, supercomputer. And uh, we actually created a uh, um, number of frameworks to specifically for deep learning uh, networks, right? And uh, we have uh, Onyx, um, but Onyx incorporated uh, with all the advanced optimizers. And uh, so we continuously at top of the leaderboard and the deep speed, we open source a deep speed. Right now, deep speed enables us to be able to um, retrain, pre-training, retraining these very large, um, very large AGI models. And uh, so um, the reason we open source it, we of course build into our product as well. And uh, we want to really help uh, advance of, uh, uh, of AI in the world, right? It would, so um, if you're interested in this space, you have access to large um, uh, cluster of GPU and you can go ahead, you can grab, we open source some of these uh, model um, as well with scripts in Hugging Face. So the massive AI models being just coming, right? It's box my mind uh, um, in the past couple of years. And I know the largest one right now have 1.75 uh, uh, trillion parameters, like a huge, right? Um, I can imagine how big that computer is. Right now you use a <coughs> deep speed and uh, we actually, you can train uh, trillion parameter models with, um, uh, with deep speed. Obviously would take uh, uh, quite a bit of time, probably a few weeks. And uh, if you don't have a restart, right? You get all your param parameter correctly and uh, then uh, uh, still will burn that resources of huge compute cluster for a long time. So one thing I learned because I was doing relational database, everything measured by uh, milliseconds um, in AI, large AI model retraining measured by hours and days. And uh, with supercomputer, things will change. So what do you use these um, um, large model for, right? because now the AI is become a generative AI, right? And um, you can use it to write books. Somebody actually published a book, an article and they use AI to generate uh, writings. You can use this model to generate uh, marketing materials, right? To be creative and uh, create the product descriptions and uh, generate the questions. This is actually a case study. 
you can find the video. Uh, Avi Point is a learning management system. And for example, if you have a high school student cramming for um, SAT test, right? They do lots of uh, 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 test uh, preparation test test. And uh, so it's not very easy to keep generating these questions and uh, for students to do the test. And uh, uh, so we, we actually have AI do this. And um, there's only one correct answer and it will generate multiple choices. And, um, and hopefully um, the student uh, really masters the material will pick the right choice. So um, this is a, they, also you can use this to onboard new employees, right? Everybody uh, working for a company, now you know you have lots of a training, um, onboarding training, new hire training, a standard business training and all that. And um, you took training, need to be quizzed, right? So these are uh, one example, very useful. Um, this is their, uh, oh, let me just go past. Then uh, uh, last few bits, I want to, five minutes, I want to talk about uh, responsible AI, right? We want to do this responsibly and Microsoft have a committee for responsible AI since the beginning. And uh, we do this for every single um, uh, initiative product release features and uh, we'll actually have to go through the reviews. Not in, uh, we follow the practice, and we'll go through reviews. We actually build a lot of tools as well, and we released it as a, a open source um, product, allow our customers to, to build their uh, um, product responsibly. So for example, with eBuy, we build a trusted uh, platform, uh, could be used for example, for loan application decisions, right? There's inherent bias, um, there's inherent bias in the data. It's not because you labeled it. It's just amount of data, right? Machine learning is the algorithm learning from your data. So we incorporated uh, uh, transparent AI interpreter ML and the fair learn to be able to make sure you don't have actually um, biased loan decision, right? These are all open sourced. You can do interpreted with glass box and black, black box. You can do a glass box with image recognition, obviously. And uh, then with the fairness, we have this toolkit. Um, so this also built into Azure Machine Learning. It'll do fairness assessment. Then we have this algorithm and allow to, you to actually, without changing your data sets, your features and your models, and uh, to actually create a wrapper outside um, on your, uh, your model to make it uh, um, more fair, right? Mitigate and without sacrifice performance too much. Um, I, will, I will stop here and uh, see if there's any last bit of questions. No, no further question because time's up because I need to jump in my next call. QA have a one. What skills are most important for management of ML teams? Oh, good question. And uh, so uh, I'm not data scientist by training. I think the most important thing is be curious, have an open mind. Um, I did uh, take a number of online classes so I understand what my data scientist is talking about. Um, Stanford, I find Stanford online class is the best. And uh, then the rest is be curious, um, ask questions. Don't afraid to ask dumb questions. I think I asked plenty of dumb questions. It helps me to learn as well. 